नमस्ते सरस्वती देवी गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शन्यवारी पश्चात्य देशतारिणे पंचकाउपातरुप्यस्या कृपा सिंधु बाये बचा पतितनाम पवाने प्यो वैष्णवे प्यो नमो नमः जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गधाधार श्री वासदेगोर भक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो वेलकम एवरीवन to our study of Bhakti Shastri. We're studying Bhagavad Gita. So, uh, I've opened the PowerPoint. Uh, are you able to see the PowerPoint? Are you seeing it okay on your screen? Yes, ma'am. Okay, good. So we'll go ahead. Let me see. Lesson 3. Varnashram Dharma in the Bhagavad Gita. So, some review from last week. Identified Arjuna's first four reasons for not fighting. So, can we have a volunteer who could tell us what were the four reasons Arjuna had for not fighting? Amrita Gopi? Uh, yes, Maharaj. He was concerned that um, if there is a war, um, the, all the men will be killed and family will be ruined and there will be a religion in the family and the women will be polluted unwanted children will be born he was concerned about that that was one reason the degradation of the di dynasty yeah right all right can we have another reason from someone else Archana. Hare Shankar Maharaj. Yeah. Uh, Prana. Yeah, another reason is uh, mercy and uh, compassion. Compassion, right, that's the word, compassion. Compassion for who? Uh, for the body. Yeah, for the body, right, his compassion was based on the body. So those are two reasons, and we have two more reasons. <laughs> Saki Harini Maharaji. Saki Harini Maharaji is there today? Not joined yet? No, no Maharaj. Okay, what about Jivan Prabhu? Is he there? Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dhanubha Pranams. Dhanubha Pranams Prabhu. Uh, another reason would be uh, like he won't be able to enjoy the kingdom with his uh, relatives, like from right. general uncles, fathers, right. grandfathers, because everyone will be killed. So right. there's no one left for him to enjoy the kingdom with, no one to share it with. Okay, good. Thank you, Prabhu. And Anthony, Anthony is there? Yes, yes, Mother. You know the fourth reason? One more reason? Um, well, we had destruction of the dynasty, we have... Well, we had that, we had destruction of the dynasty, yes. We had compassion. Uh, uh, community projects and so... What no, that's all, still. that's all included with the destruction of the dynasty. Yeah. But there's one more. He wouldn't enjoy compassion 
the destruction of the dynasty. One more reason, Krishna and Janardhan. What's the fourth reason? Kirtida Mataji wants to. Kirtida is there? Krishna, all oh, gosh, the father, uh, he was speaking about sinful reactions, that all these actions go into the sinful, uh, that these actions, they are sinful, and it uh, causes sinful reactions. <laughs> yes, sinful activities will bring sinful reactions. So he was worried about if he's going to fight and kill people, that he will get sinful reactions. All right, so we, we identified those four reasons, which were all there in the first chapter and part of the second chapter also. And then progressive steps leading toward destruction of the dynasty, right? What's the first thing which happens, which causes the destruction of the dynasty? The first step? The death of the elders, right, the death of the elders. And with the death of the elders, then the next thing? Family tradition will be destroyed, the Family tradition will be destroyed, okay. And then? Family become religious. Yes, community will become religious, and then? Degradation of women, women Yes. Women become polluted. Hmm? Women become polluted, and then we get what? Unwanted progeny. Uh-huh. And finally? Community projects and family welfare activities will be oh, devastated. Right, yes. Thank you, Prabhu. So we spoke, we identified these different stages which are all due to the destruction of the dynasty. And Arjuna thought that if he fought, he would be responsible for destroying the dynasty. And so he thought better not to fight. And then we also spoke about the application of the statement about women are generally not very intelligent. And we discussed that some, some women are certainly not very intelligent, but not all women. And we concluded that de devotee women are not less intelligent. Devotee women, they are intelligent women. Okay. And then we spoke also about appropriate and inappropriate application of the principle of the utility of violence. That some people think all violence is wrong. You know, they like the, 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 some Buddhist groups, they will take out the worms from the earth, uh, or then you, you have the Jainis, Ahimsa Jains, they will sweep the path, and they will wear Ahimsa silk, and they're also wearing a mask like everybody else. They've been wearing masks for a long time, for centuries, the Jains. And so they practice... Uh, non-violence to a great extent, but there is appropriate application of violence. There is appropriate application. And that application, maybe like in the government, the state may sometimes require to use violence to establish law and order or to maintain their borders and so on. Okay, and Manu Samhita also speaks about the death penalty for murderers. Okay, so that's everything we covered. Now we're going to go on today to speak something about Vanashram Dharma. Krishna has spoken a little bit about it. Here we have a quote from the purport. Chapter 1, text 39 to 40. Would someone like to read this quote for me? Do we have a good reader? Can I read? Yeah, go ahead. In the system of the Varnashrama institution, there are many principles of religious traditions to help members of the family grow properly 
and attain spiritual values. The Varnashrama religion's principles were so designed that the good population would prevail in society for the general spiritual progress of state and community. All right. So the purpose of the Varnashram is there to help members of the family grow properly and attain spiritual values for their material and spiritual benefit. So the society is organized in this way. The Varnashram institution is a system of organizing the people so that the family can grow properly materially and spiritually. And so good population would prevail in society. So important, it's so, it's so vital to get good population for the progress of the state and the community. Okay, so uh, these are, there are different aspects to be looked at in studying Varnashram. We've already defined in the previous slide, we spoke about what is the purpose of Varnashram, the definition, and explained it a bit. The modes influence the different Varnas and the different duties of Varnas and Ashram, and the results of following Varnashram. We'll look at these things just to, in case you don't know. So, definition of Varnashram Dharma, occupational duties or prescribed duties, occupational duties, Brahman, Kshatri, Vaishya Sutra, these are different occupational duties, prescribed duties, one is Sri Dharma, one's a mother, prescribed duties, she has to take care of her children. She has to, that's most important for the, the mother to look after the child or, or children. And then so many other things we have to do. So prescribed duties, take maybe elders are there, they have to be looked after. Different duties. Swadharma. When we speak about Swadharma, means one's own religious principles. So we have our Swadharma, right? As devotees, our Swadharma is to be the servant of Krishna, following Krishna, Krishna's teachings. But there's also Swakarma, one's own duty. Now Arjuna's duty is certainly different from uh, Krishna's duty, right? Krishna's there is a chariot driver. Arjuna's duty, he's supposed to fight. So they have different duties according to their situation. And then Kula Dharma, concerned with the family, just like we have Guru Kula, the family of the Guru, the, the students of the Guru. So Kula, the Dharma. Kula Dharma, concerned with the family traditions. And Jati Dharma, Jati can also relate to family, or relates to somebody who's like a, a, a Jati Brahman, he's a Brahman by birth, he's, you know, he's born in that line. We speak about a Jati Brahman, that by birth he's a Brahman. You may not actually have the qualification of the Brahmana, but somehow he's born in that kind of family. So there's also Jati Dharma, and Jati Dharma is talking about the community projects. Different communities will have different projects, just like our community here in Mayapur. They have projects, they have their big temple, the temple of the Vedic planetarium. You could call it a community project. We have our community hospital. Mm, so this is all part of community projects. We have schools for the community. Mm, so this is all Jati Dharma. 
Prabhupada's purport, chapter 231, verse 31 says, Human civilization begins from the stage of Varnashram Dharma or specific duties in terms of the specific modes of nature of the body obtained. So, to human civilization, we, we, we tend to think, you know, we're an advanced civilization, but without having proper division of society, human civilization has not begun. So there should be this Varnashram Dharma in terms of different duties. And people, the different natures of people should be recognized and they should be properly engaged according to their nature. And so it, it's important to recognize you know, the nature of a brahmana, somebody likes to study and read or worship, and somebody else is a more, you know, just a worker. He may just be sudra, just a laborer, just has to be told what to do. Different natures, so different modes influence him. That is described also in Bhagavad Gita. Chatur varnam maya shistam. Shistam, maya shistam. Krishna said, I created. What did Krishna create? Chatur Varna, the four Varnas. Krishna created them. And how did he create them? Guna, Karma, Vibhagashaha. According to Guna, quality and Karma, work. So, Prabhupada translates it according to the three modes of material nature, the Gunas, and the work associated with them, the karma, the four divisions of human society are created by me. So we have to understand the modes of nature do influence people, everyone, we're all influenced by different modes and according to these modes we should be engaged in different ways. Here you can see the Brahmana is a symbol of the mode of goodness. The Kshatriya, a symbol of the mode of passion. The Vaishya, mixed passion and ignorance. And the Sudra, generally the mode of ignorance. So, someone may say that they're Brahmana by birth. What would you say to such a person? Will you recognize him as actually a Brahmana? Anybody like to comment? If somebody says, I'm born a Brahmana, is that enough to qualify a person actually as a Brahmana? That one's father is a Brahman? Hi Krishna. Uh, of a medical practitioner is not a doctor. So Prabhupada is reporting that one doesn't is not born as a Brahmin. Of course he can be born into a Brahmin family. But however he has to practice Brahminical culture in order to become a Brahmin. Okay, very good. So is there some advantage for a person born in a Brahmana family? He has the opportunity to practice Brahminical culture from very, from very part. Yes, actually, it's a, it's an advantage. It can be it can be an advantage to be born in a Brahmana family. Of course, it will depend how the mother and father are. Are they Brahminical? Do they practice the mode of goodness? The the environment at home will be very important in influencing the nature of the person. Just like your father may be a doctor, and so your, your father may be doctor, mother may be doctor, and then it's, it's very likely the children will also be somewhat interested or inclined towards medical, medical studies. And we often see that. We often see that generation after generation, their family are doctors. 
or some other people are lawyers. So Brahmanas, it's an advantage to be born in a Brahmana family, but it's not enough. You want to be a high court judge, you have to be elected, you have to be approved, you have to have the qualification. So somebody is a Brahmana, how can we recognize that they're actually a Brahmana? What do you say? How can we recognize someone as a Brahmana? Hare Krishna Maharaj Ji, Dhanvi Pranam. Yes. Uh, as it is said that in Kali all are Shudras, uh, so based on the qualities of one person, we can judge that uh, whether he's a Brahman or not. If he performs devotional practices, then he will be said as a Brahman. Okay, he may perform devotional activities, but devotional activities can also be influenced by the modes of nature. You know, someone may be, may be doing devotional activities, but they may be very passionate, or they may even be ignorant. It doesn't necessarily imply that they're in the mode of goodness. Right? What do you say, Mataji? But he, uh, he perf uh, on a regular basis, devotional practices get into the uh, We're having some int we're having some internet problem. My line is not stable. Can you speak up? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Can you hear? I can't hear anything. Is anybody talking? Maharaj, we can hear you as well. Sorry? Oh, we can hear Mataji, uh, Maharaj, and we can hear you as well. But I, I couldn't hear Mataji. What did she say? Hare Krishna Maharaji, am I audible now? Yes. Yeah, I am saying that if one performs his devotional practices on regular basis, uh, being in touch with devotees also, then he will get the qualities of Brahman. If my thought is not a Brahman also, so it will help him uh, in uh, becoming more and more uh, uh, devotion, devotional towards Lord Krishna. Well, somebody may perform activities regularly, but they may perform them very passionately regularly, or they may perform them regularly in the mode of ignorance. No, but if he's aware that why he's doing this kind of thing, uh, he's aware of all that and uh, trying to learn to purify himself from within, so it will help him to grow more and more spiritually. No. Okay. Definitely, we we want to see the quality. There have to be there has to be the, the actual qualities there. The quality of the Brahman, I mean the mode of goodness. What is the, what is the main quality of the mode of goodness? Means to have a, a sattvic life, means uh, to have a food, a sattvic food, so that uh, uh, his anger can be controlled, all that thing, and uh, he will remain in sattvic mode always, not in the mode of passion. <laughs> Yes. So, which is very much beneficial for spiritual life. What What is that sattvic mood? What are the symptoms of that sattvic mood? <coughs> yes. uh, Excuse me, Maharaj, are we talking about, uh, are you getting uh, at the point of a Brahman is very forgiving? Mm, no, it's very compassionate. I just want you to understand but when we talk about the mode of goodness, sattva gun, generally we, the symptom of the mode of goodness are 
one will feel happiness and one also has knowledge that these two things are there. The, the mood of hap that one is happy, that he's actually feeling sat peaceful and satisfied, that he's got something maybe which others haven't got, so he feels happiness. And he's got the, these two things are generally there connected with the mode of goodness, knowledge and happiness. Krishna Maharaj, I have some things to say, if you agree. Yeah, please. Yeah, the quality of the Brahmana should be like peacefulness, self-control, austere and purity, tolerance. Yes, right. Honesty, right. wisdom, wisdom yes. knowledge, and perhaps the religiousness in the Kali Yuga. Uh, and these are the most, uh, um, these are the qualities of the Brahmana by nature. Yes, right. There are nine qualities for the Brahmana. Okay, we'll go ahead, let's see. Specific duties of the Brahmana. And here we see the nine qualities Prabhu just mentioned. Natural qualities by which the Brahmana works. Right? Honesty. He'll be truthful, he won't hide the truth. And purity. They're very clean, they keep everything clean. They like to clean everything, wash the cloth every day, clean the floor every day, and self-control, austerity, these things. Okay, and then the Kshatriya, he has his qualities, different. Kshatriya is a hero, he's powerful, determined. Courageous in battle, he's very generous, give charity a lot to people, like to do charity and leadership. Ishwara Bhav is described as that ability to control. So that's for the Kshatriya. And then the Vaishya, farming, cow protection and business. They do like that. Take care of the cows. On the bulls also, engage the bulls in farming and business, trading. So this is Vaishya and then the Sudra, they are the workers, labor, service to others. So this is all described, 18th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. And then we have the ashrams, the duty of the sannyasi, fearlessness, to go out for preaching. Far away places, don't know anybody, like Prabhupada going to America, not knowing anybody, not but not afraid. And cultivating spiritual knowledge purifies existence by doing austerities and so on. And then for the Vanaprastha, austerity. Grihastas, charity, self control, sacrifice. And the brahmachari, study, study the Vedas. So different duties for different ashrams. And the results of following Varnashram, Prabhupada describes in second chapter. Discharging one specific duty in any field of action in accordance with the orders of higher authorities serves to elevate one to a higher status of life. So we understand the importance here, accepting authority. Somebody's an, in an authority position, we accept whatever instructions they give us. That's important. We don't act independently, but we follow instructions. Someone can read this one? Someone else? Go ahead. Discharging one specific duty in any field of action in accordance with the orders of higher authorities serves to elevate one to a higher status of life. Okay, so we should all be interested in a higher status of life. That's very important. We should understand the importance. Sometimes people don't think about the next life or the future life. 
but we should be concerned. We want to elevate ourselves. We don't want to degrade ourselves. So proper performance of duty will help us to elevate our status. And we quote here from Bhagavad Gita, Swarga Dwaram Apavritam, open the doors of the heavenly planets by proper performance of duty. And, okay, that's the same quote. Results following Varnashram. Here's a quote from Srimad Bhagavatam, fourth canto. Whoever, someone can read? Some Prabhu can read? Let's, I can read much. Yeah, go ahead. Whoever executes his occupational duty, Swadharma, for 100 births, for instance, if a Brahmana continues to act as a Brahmana, becomes eligible for promotion to Brahma Loka, the planet where Lord Brahma lives. Srimad Bhagavatam 4.24.29 purpose. Thank you. So, Swadharma, our occupational duty. And the occupational duty, the example is given of a Brahmana. So you do your duty as a Brahmana for 100 births. It shows you, <laughs> it takes a long time to get promotion to Brahma Loka. To go all the way up to Brahma Loka, of course, Brahma Loka is the topmost planet in the material universe. So you can go up there to Brahma Loka and you can reside there with Lord Brahma and wait for the end of Lord Brahma's life and maybe you can go back to Godhead if Lord Brahma also goes, you could go with him. That's a, a long way, a lot, takes a long time, 100 births. You can understand how powerful Krishna consciousness is. Okay, so we spoke about Varnasham Dharma, how it's a system to organize society for the material and spiritual benefit of the society, that everyone should be properly engaged according to their nature and the different modes of nature. Explanation of Varnashram Dharma. Yeah. So everyone's engaged according to their different natures and the modes of nature. People are in the, uh, well, it's the modes of nature, the, the Brahmanas, the mode of goodness, and the Vaishya is mixed passion and ignorance. The Kshatriya is passion, and the Sudra is ignorance. And the duties. The duty of the Varnas and Ashram, the duty of the Brahmanas to teach and to study and to worship the deities, generally six occupations of the Brahmana, studying scriptures and teaching and then worshipping deities and teaching others to worship and then they can also accept charity and they can also give charity. And Ashrams. Well, well Aish, that's, that's the Brahmana, but then Kshatriya, his duty is to manage, organize, give instruction. And the Vaishya, his duty is taking care of the land and the animals like the cows. Sometimes they do business, of course. And then ashrams are there, Brahmachari, to study, and Grihastas to the duty of the Grihasna to do sacrifice, sometimes they also give charity. <coughs> of course, generous Grihastas have been donating for the construction of the big temple here in Mayapur. And then uh, the, the Vanaprastas, retired, they're meant to do austerities, go and travel to holy places, it's an austerity to go around visiting holy places. And the sannyasis, they're meant for uh, purification of existence and to be fearless, to go forward in preaching Krishna consciousness. So different duties and the result of following Varnashram, 
Brahmaloka. You can go, go up to Brahmaloka if you're successful. Alright, so now we're going to look at Arjuna's reasons for not fighting. Compassion, enjoyment, sinful reactions and destruction of the dynasty. Arjuna's four reasons. The first reason, compassion. Right? We're going to speak about that. Someone can read this verse. Prabhu, chant the Sanskrit. Yes, who can read it? I can try. Okay, if you can't read the Sanskrit, just read the English. Osana Pratha, do not yield to this degrading importance. It does not it does not become you. Give up this petty weakness of the heart and arise, O chestnut of the enemy. Bhagavad Gita 2.3. Alright, so Lord Krishna is instructing Arjuna that give up this weakness of heart, this ridaya durbaudyam, the weakness of heart. This is uh, what we would call this is due to material attachment. You have this weakness of heart. And Lord Krishna is encouraging Arjuna. Don't, don't yield. Don't, don't, give, don't just allow this to influence you. Don't become like this. Because he is son of Prita. Who is Prita? Yes? Kunti Maharani. Kunti Maharani, right. Kunti Maharani. She's, she's a great soul. She's a great personality. And what's her relationship with Lord Krishna? Aunt, met, uh... Yes, the aunt, right. Hmm. So, Krishna is reminding Arjuna about his relationship to his great family. Don't be so weak, petty weakness of heart, an impotent, degrading impotence. Do not yield to this degrading impotence. Someone's impotent, they have no potency. It's, it's not good, it's not a compliment. So Krishna's inciting Arjuna, he wants to, you know, and rise him up, make him a little bit angry and get him a bit more in the mood of battle. He's come on the battlefield. He describes him chastiser of the enemy. But he, <laughs> he's not going to be able to chastise any enemy in that condition. If he has a weak heart and if he's impotent, how can he chastise the enemy? So Prabhupada speaks. Let's have someone read. Can I read, Maharaj? Yes, please. Kishma Sundana, you killed demon Madhu, therefore your name is Madhusudana. But you are asking me to kill my grandfather and teacher. That is the hint. It is all right that your name is Madhusudana. You killed one demon whose name was Madhu. But you are asking me, Bhishma Sudhana? Bhishma is my grandfather. And Drona Sudhana? Sudhana means killer. So how can I be that? Bhagavad Gita 2.1 to 10, Los Angeles, November 25th, 1960. So Prabhupada making a very nice point here. <laughs> or taken from the Acharyas. But the idea is, you know. Lord Krishna's name is Madhusudan. How did Arjuna know this? Anyway, he's called Krishna by this name Madhusudana. But there's Arjuna saying, 
you want me to kill Bhishma and Drona? And then I'm Bhishma, Dun, at least Madhu was a demon, but Bhishma and Drona, they're my relatives, my teacher. You want me to kill them? It's, how can I do that? It's a nice argument. All right, we'll go ahead. A fifth objection. Remember we had four, so here's the fifth one, which comes up, text number six. Indecision. Nor do we know which is better, conquering them or being conquered by them. We don't know which is better. Arjuna can't make up his mind. Should I conquer them or should I just let them conquer us? And so this is another reason for not fighting. So, now we come to this very nice verse, text number seven in this uh, chapter. Maybe you've all memorized it by now, have you? Arjuna surrenders to Krishna. All right. Who would like to chant it for us? Please. Oh, very expert. Very nice. Do you know the translation? Read. Madhuji. Now I am confused about my duty and have lost all composure because of miserly weakness. In this condition, I am asking you to tell me for certain what is best for me. Now I am your disciple and a soul surrendered unto you. Please instruct me. Yes, a very big step Arjuna made. Arjuna saying, Now I am your disciple and a soul surrendered unto you. So key words in this verse, Dharma Samuda, I am confused about my duty. Well, that's a big problem. If you, if, you, if you don't know what your duty is, how can you do it? If you're confused, you don't know what you're supposed to do, then you've got problems. So Arjuna's in this situation, he's confused. But he's got something in his favor. He's got Lord Krishna with him. And he's intelligent enough to understand he needs to surrender to Krishna. Therefore he says, now I am your disciple. So, it's very nice. Arjuna has taken this step, surrendered himself to Lord Krishna. So, here's your exercise. We want you to identify the principles from Arjuna's dilemma and surrender to Krishna, and then how these principles are relevant in your own practice of Krishna consciousness. All right? So, how many people have we got in the class today? Uh, it's 19 students, Maharaj. 19 students. So we have three groups, one group of seven and two groups of six. Yeah. Okay, Maharaj. So you, you'll divide the, the classes, the group? Yes. yes, yes, Maharaj. Thank you.
First, we identify the principles drawn from Arjuna's dilemma and surrender to Krishna. Identify the general principles drawn from Arjuna's dilemma and surrender to Krishna. Second part. And discuss how these are relevant in our own practice of Krishna consciousness. So, uh, can I add something? Uh, there, uh, it is said that <coughs> confusion is a good state. Uh, when we are confused, we will uh, we aim to learn more and more about something, uh, whether it may be a spiritual duty or a material duty. And when we are in a confused state, we, cho we choose to uh, go under a training, uh, under a mentor, a spiritual master or guide. So, that is mostly, uh, we can say, any specialist or any achiever uh, in his life uh, go through these stages. First, he is bewildered or confused, then he go for a mentor, uh, mentor, and then mentor guide him, and then he develop the qualities like this. I think we need to first find out the, what are the principles that leads Arjun to surrender to Krishna. So what are the dilemmas? So like we need to find out what, what are the dilemmas that Arjun is mentioned. Am I understanding this right, Maharaj? Yes, this is right. You have the correct understanding. First, you have to look at what is the dilemma. What is Arjuna's problem? Yes. So on the text four in the second chapter, Arjun says that how can I counter attack my arrows in battle? Uh, men like Bhishma and Drona who are worthy of my worship. So that, that is the, his first dilemma. How can I, you know, kill my teacher and my grandfather? Yes. You can say bodily attachment, undue bodily attachment. Yeah. And he says, Guru Nahatwai Mahanubhavan. He says it's, it's better to live uh, begging in this world rather than killing the great souls like this. Okay? Yes, Arjuna is faced with this di dilemma. Arjuna is a Kshatriya and he's come on the battlefield and he's expected to fight. But at the same time he has his thoughts in his mind. He has his different reasons about not fighting. Mm. Um, can we also talk about the miserly weakness when he's talking about only the bodily conception of life. He is trying to solve only the problems of the body and not the soul. Yes, that's very good reason. He's confused about his swadharma. Yes. Yeah, what is his duty and what is not his duty? What is his duty? Yes, right. That's a dilemma there. Uh -huh. Also, he wants to enjoy uh, you know, like, I mean, he's thinking that, like, the outcome of this should be the enjoyment, right? Yes. And whether that is a, you know, he's not going to get that if he kills his people. Mm -hmm. He is attached to a result. Uh, 
Yes, but at the same time, he's intelligent and he has intelligence enough and humility enough to submit to the spiritual teacher. Okay, yeah, I'll leave you to discuss more. Hare Krishna. You can also see that uh, Arjun was thinking of a body, not for the soul. Means he was thinking yes, on the material level for the body, not for soul. Right, right. So we should not be like that. I think this is the core principle if you look at the four factors uh, compassion, simple reaction, uh, enjoyment, and, and destruction of the family. These are, I think, these four principles. This was the Also, can we also say that um, Arjuna was thinking more of himself, like a he was concerned about uh, getting seen as for himself and also you know not having anybody around to say his victory that's about himself so he was kind of focusing on himself right so whatever whatever outcome he thinks is on it's only for himself so i don't know i don't know the right word how to describe that in one word Yeah, have you recognized the dilemma, Arjuna's dilemma, that he has to make this decision? And yes, Palachi. Uh, we have found some points uh, in that uh, we have said that uh, he, Arjun was basically confused uh, what to do and what not to do. So he take a shelter of Lord Krishna as a spiritual master. So we should also try to implement this thing in our life also that uh, whenever we are in any kind of confused situation we took sh we should take shelter of the person who is not at all confused like the one who is a spiritual master who is a mahatma and uh, as uh, we have as there is also one more point that uh, that jayant prabhu ji has shared that uh, uh, Arjun was talking like an intelligent person, a learned person, but was behaving like an emotional person. So we should not follow this kind of thing in our life when it comes to implementation part. Okay. And one more point was is that uh, he was thinking uh, on met on material level for the material bodies, not for the soul. Uh, uh, so uh, Lord Krishna teaches teaches him that uh, we should think always think at the soul level because uh, soul is everlasting. Uh, yes. But material body finishes time to time. Uh -huh. Soul, soul is always there. So we have collected some few points like this. Okay, good, good. Prabhupada also talks about the kripana, the, the opposite of the brahmana, and the the consciousness of the kripana. So you can also bring that into your discussion. What is this mood, this kripana, this miserly mentality? Okay, go ahead. I would like to add also yes. one more point. Mm. Uh, like uh, as we follow Krishna consciousness, so it is a moment of uh, practicing war against Maya. So as Arjun was fighting in the battlefield, similarly when we are following Krishna consciousness, we are also in the battlefield of Maya. So we need mm. to fight against the Maya. For that, without the mercy of Vaishnavas and Lord, we can't move even one step forward in Krishna consciousness. As Arjun was not able to fight 
in the battlefield without the instruction and guidance from Lord Krishna. So without mercy of devotees of Krishna and Vaishnavas. And Vaishnavas. We cannot fight. We are justified to the point, right? Yes, Prabhu, it is. Basically, when we are looking for mercy of devotees of um, Krishna and Vaishnavas, we are um, we are in a way actually uh, uh, serving them and surrendering them, right? Um, yes, sir. So that is the point. The point over here is, uh, I mean, 2.7, um, the point is that we have to surrender to, a, uh, to our superior authority uh, who is coming in the line of Krishna so that we are able to take guidance and... Uh, uh, so, so that's how we are have to infer. Uh, so, when we are fighting this war against Maya, um, we cannot fight against. I mean, Maya uh, by ourselves. So, by surrendering uh, to senior Vaishnavas, we get their mercy and uh, uh, and guidance, so that we'll be able to uh, fight more strongly against Maya. Okay. Okay, I, I think you've got enough points here. I think we will close the meeting now. Have you picked yes. some somebody to represent the group? Okay. Okay, you can close the group, Prabhu's. Haribo. Yagna Prabhu. Yagna Prabhu. Yagna. Yes, Maharaj. We can close the groups. Okay, Maharaj. Okay, is everyone back? Everybody came now, Maharaj. Okay. So, let's hear from group number one. We have a spokesman. Hare Krishna Maharaj Ji, Tandar Pranam. Uh -huh. uh, I'm representing on behalf of our group, our team. So, in our discussion, we have uh, concluded some of the points. Like, uh, it was asked that uh, what was the general principle from Arjuna's dilemma and surrender to Krishna. So, we got this point that uh, the general principle was that uh, Arjun was confused about the, about his duty, what to do and what not to do. So, uh, what he do is he take shelter of Lord Krishna as a spiritual master. Uh, so, in our life, to implement that part in our life, we should also, whenever we are in any kind of confused situation, we should take shelter of such a person who are not at all confused, like a spiritual master and a Mahatma. And the second one was that... Uh, Arjun was thinking of on material level, not at the soul level. So we should not uh, think like that, that uh, the person, material conception should not be there for any person, for any living entity in our life. We should think that everyone is our soul and everyone is a part and parcel of Lord Krishna. And another point is that uh, Arjun was talking like an intelligent, like a lone person, but was behaving like an emotional person. Uh, that uh, because uh, he was emotionally full that what uh, he was thinking of emotion relations bodily relations uh, at that time that uh, what happened if our relatives would be killed in this war all that and uh, one more point that was shared by you you that uh, the miser qualities he was having the weakness uh, 
qualities was there that uh, he was behaving like a miser person so we should not try to be a weak person from inside inside that we should be strong spiritually strong from inside so that if anything happens in our life we should be able to fight against that okay. any kind of situation happens in our life all right where do you, where do you get that strength to fight from by practicing devotion uh, services and uh, engaging in uh, devotional services uh, chanting the holy name associating with devotees all that with their guidance okay good all right thank you very much any comments yeah, let's hear group number 2 I'll be speaking on behalf of group two. Uh, so again, like Matsu mentioned, uh, some of the principles uh, that led to that, that that led to Arjuna's dilemmas and surrender were that first he uh, he was acting on the bodily platform, so which is miserly weakness. He he wanted to solve the problems of the body. Second, he did not want to kill his Uh, guru and his relatives again that is also on the bodily platform he was thinking on the bodily platform he was confused about his duty as to uh, uh, duty as a kshatriya and uh, he was attached to the results and uh, he was thinking about enjoyment and he had the dilemma of whether we whether he should be conquered or whether he should conquer so that was his confusion but uh, like you mentioned in the end maharaj that he was intelligent enough and humble enough to surrender unto krishna and accept him as his spiritual master so similarly we see this in our lives as well uh, we talked about confusion about our duties uh, uh, we we talked about how devotees uh, who have who, who have to take care of their families who of non devotees if there is if there's a couple where it, one one person is a devotee and the other is not uh, the devotee has to it has to deal with the dilemma of whether to serve the partner or whether to continue uh, his devotional service and they have to balance both and uh, second is uh, we are all attached to the results of our activities whether be it material or in our devotional lives uh we even when we are chanting we think of the results of our chanting even in the material life whatever we do we think of our results and in the end it is important that we uh we also seek guidance from a spiritual master whenever we are confused whenever we are in a dilemma it is important that we seek guidance from a spiritual master okay thank you so much very nice Great. Let's hear group three. Hare Krishna, Ma- Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, so um, I think the points um, which we have already discussed regarding the uh, Arjuna's dilemma, like indecision, weakness of heart, um, he is confused about his duty, and uh, he doesn't want to become the uh, Sudhana or the killer of his relatives and teacher. Um, but uh, at uh, keeping these uh, points or these dilemmas in mind like uh, uh, when we are confused it is best to surrender someone who knows best for us and uh, we need to uh, surrender to a superior authority and uh, and we also uh, need to um, let krishna knows that i am yours like okay we, uh, we are surrendered to you and you please instruct us krishna how do we go about um, things so we need to come to the platform of complete surrender and how we can uh, connect it with our uh, krishna consciousness in our practice of krishna consciousness is uh, like uh, when as devotees we are put uh, uh, many times we are put under uh, tests like to test our faith so whenever there is a problem um, we always um, we always have to know that uh, krishna is always with us and uh, uh, we need to uh, actually um, Jivan Prabhu brought, brought out a very nice quote saying that um, you don't tell Krishna your problem, but you tell your problem that I have Krishna with me. So Avashya Rakshite Krishna. So always Krishna is with us, and He will definitely protect us. And uh, uh, so to to actually to approach Krishna, 
we need to have the guidance of our senior Vaishnavas, our Acharyas and our Guru Parampara so that it helps us uh, in our spirit, spiritual path and progress. So, uh, so um, when we are in, uh, in an indecisive uh, uh, state of mind and when we are not able to take, so it is best to approach a senior Vaishnava, our spiritual master, and take guidance and instructions from them. And also, uh, one last point uh, is, like uh, in the material world, it is like we are fighting against Maya. So like just like how Arjuna was in the battlefield uh, fighting against his relatives and uh, uh, cousins and teachers like uh, like that when we are surrendering and serving uh, senior Vaishnavas, uh, Guru, spiritual master uh, and Krishna, then we get the mercy of uh, uh, our, uh, our senior Vaishnavas, Guru Parampara, Guru, spiritual master and uh, Krishna. So it will be easy for us to actually fight against Maya by uh, surrendering and getting their uh, mercy. So these are the points we are able to discuss. Maharaj. Can I hear this point again? You said that uh, Prabhu made the point about we don't tell Krishna our problems. What do we do? Yeah. We don't, uh, uh, don't tell Krishna about your problem. But you tell your problem that I have Krishna with me. Oh, tell our problem. <laughs> tell our problem that Krishna is with me. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> I don't know how, how, quite, how you tell the problem. <laughs> Basically tell our mind, I guess. Too. Oh, okay. Okay, very nice. Thank you so Thank much. You. All right, we'll go ahead. Let's see here. Mm. Screen sharing. All right, can everyone see the screen? Are you able to see the PowerPoint okay? Yes, we are there. Yes. Yes, okay, good. We'll go ahead. All right, let's see. Someone like to read for me? Hare Krishna Prabhu, may I? Yes, please Prabhu, yes. Uh, Dharm Samuda, Kripan, means one who does not properly use his position. One man is very rich, but he does not use his money. Simply sees the money. He is called Kripan. Similarly, Arjun is powerful. He can fight. He is a Kshatriya but he is denying his ability. What, what is the meaning again? Dharma Samuda? Do you remember? He is confused about his duty. Right. And Kripana, we are hearing about... There is a bit more. Go ahead, Prabhu. Uh, therefore, he is thinking, I have become Kripana, miser. Although I have got strength, I am denying to fight. Although I have got money, I do not spend. These are called Kripan. So, Kripanne Dosho Pahata. Now I am infected with Karpanne Dosha. Mm. Karpanya Dosha. Dosha. Faults, right? So, this is a, this is a fault. Someone is a miser, miserly person. Do you know any misers like that? They've got money, but they don't like to spend it. Right? They simply see the money. They count it. They smell it. They don't spend it. Maybe they don't have a wife. Wife would help them spend it, right? So, Arjuna is condemning himself, that he is, he said, I have this fault, I have this karpanya dosha. Arjuna has strength, he has the ability to fight, but he's thinking, I don't think, I, I, I don't want to fight. So this is like Kripana. And Prabhupada in the purport, how does he compare this? He talks about who is Kripana?
Someone? Who is Kripana? A miserly person who only thinks about his body and things related to his body. Yes, he, he doesn't think about the goal of life. He has a, the human body, the human life is meant for self-realization. But he won't use it for self-realization. What will he do? He's only busy with what? Material enjoyment. Eating, sleeping, mating and defending. Yes. So, this is miserly person. They won't take up spiritual life. They think, oh no, I, I'm happy to be a, a mudha or to be a, a dog. The same activities. So, this is miserly person. So, Prabhupada contrasts the Brahmana and the Kripana. Well, the one who, the Kripana is the opposite of the Brahmana. One who is actually Brahmana, he's on the path of Brahman. He's very concerned with self realization. And he will give everything for a higher purpose. All right, someone read this quote here. Maharaji? Arjuna, argued, okay. Maharaji. Arjuna, are you religious principles should be given more importance than politics or so, uh, sociology? But he did not know that knowledge of matter, soul and supreme is even more important than religious Formula, uh, for, formularies. Formularies, yes. Arjuna is saying religious principle is more important than politics or sociology. Mm. But there's something even more important, right? There's, there's Artha Shastra and higher than Artha Shastra is Dharma Shastra. Dharma Shastra is religious principles. But there's something even higher than religious principles. What is that? That is Jnana Shastra. Jnana Shastra. Knowledge of matter, soul and the supreme is even more important than religious formularies. And so just Dharma Shastras that's not the highest thing. Above that is transcendental knowledge, jnana. Okay, so we have to go back over this now and talk about some of these things. Uh, let's go to the Bhagavad Gita. Well, anyway, we can work with this, with the objectives here. Uh, Varnashram Dharma, definition and explanation of Varnashram Dharma. We explained about these things, the importance of Varnashram, organizing society. Prabhupada said, we cannot re expect to reinstitute Varnashram Dharma. He said, we won't be able to do that. People will never go. But he said, we want to, to be able to show people how it works. And by our ISKCON society, we want to present to them how the Varnashram Dharma system works and how it's a very effective and scientific method of organizing society for the material and spiritual upliftment of society. And Prabhupada said, just like sometimes in the universities, you know, they will have courses like, uh, maybe they study languages like Latin, and Greek. Nobody uses it anymore, but still they keep the department there. The department is there. So he said in the same way we should have, we need to have Varnashram Dharma. And we want to show people practical use of this, practical implementation of this system of Varnashram Dharma.
Okay, so we have to speak about this point, relating Arjuna's reasons for not fighting to principles of Varnashram Dharma. Let's go back. Okay, here we are. Arjuna's four reasons for, for not fighting. Compassion. Now, according to Varnashram Dharma, who would we expect to be compassionate? What do you say? Who's going to be... Brahmana, yes. Yes, I think so. Is Arjuna a Brahmana? No. No. So Arjuna is taking up somebody else's duty. He's trying to do some other person's duty. He's trying to do something which was not really his responsibility. Now he's a Kshatriya. So, is enjoyment wrong for Arjuna? If he wants to enjoy, is this wrong? No, there's nothing wrong in that. But Arjuna's thinking that if he, if he fights, he won't enjoy. And he's thinking, if he, didn't, if he doesn't fight, he's thinking, what, well, what is Arjuna thinking if he doesn't fight? What will happen? What will people think of him? What's Arjuna thinking? What's Arjuna thinking? That people will think of him as what? If he doesn't fight? People will think of him as a, a loser and a weak, weak person. No, Arjuna's not thinking like that. Arjuna's thinking not... Thinking that he'll be... Huh? Compassionate? He, he, he thinks that he'll be called compassionate because he's not killing. Yeah, people, he's thinking that people will think, oh, he's so great. He didn't fight. He gave up. He gave up the battle. He gave up the challenge. And he went off to do what? To become a beggar, right? He's going to give up being a Kshatriya and instead he's going to become a beggar and go and live by begging. Now who's supposed to beg? Brahmana. Yes, the Brahmana can live by begging. What about a Kshatriya? No, Kshatriya don't beg. That's right. A Kshatriya cannot beg. That's, that would be... A, no, a Kshatriya cannot beg from anyone. He would not ask anyone permission. He would... A Kshatriya just comes and he wants to take and do things. He, he's a controller. He has Ishwara Bhav. He's not a beggar. So the enjoyment, this idea of, that Arjuna is thinking he will enjoy by not fighting. He, and he's thinking people will appreciate him. But he's a Kshatriya. He's not meant to do that. And then Sinful reactions. Sinful reactions. Well, Arjuna, Arjuna's thinking if he fights, he will get sinful reactions. Is it true? No, Maharaj, because if he's following his duty, his dharma, then a sinful reaction won't happen. Yes. What's his, what is his duty? What is his Swadharma? Right. What yeah. is his principle? Yes, he's, a, he's meant to fight. He's a Kshatriya. He's a meant to fight. It's his religious duty. If you read Srimad Bhagavatam, you read about Bhishma Dev fighting with Lord Krishna. You know, you know, fighting Arjuna, Bhishma was fighting Arjuna and firing arrows into Lord Krishna. 
Does Bhishma get sinful reactions for that? No. No. No, because it, 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 these, it said these arrows, Bhishma's arrows, were like flowers, like roses being offered to Krishna. So Kshatriya, Kshatriya, we, we quote it today, Swarga Dwaram Apavritam. What does it mean? Swarga Dwaram Apavritam? One person, yes? It opens the doors, but no. Yeah. One fights and if, even we not know how to win. He will go to the Swarga Dwaram by following his duty. Yeah, he will go to heaven. On he will planet. go to heaven. Right? opens the doors to the heavenly planets by doing his duty, by doing his duty, by fighting on the battlefield, he's going to go to heaven. He's not going to get sinful reactions. But Arjuna is thinking he will get sinful reactions. So he, he, he's so confused about his, his responsibility and his duty. Then, destruction of the dynasty. Is he going to destroy the dynasty by not fighting or by fighting? He's thinking, what's Arjuna thinking? Yes? What's Arjuna thinking? If he fights, what will happen? Kill the elders, and that will uh, destruction of the dynasty. Yes, right. He's thinking like that. But what's what's going to happen if he doesn't fight? Even then, they are short short of death after some time. Yeah, they're still going to die. Yes, that's true. But what about the dynasty? If he doesn't fight. He would, if he doesn't fight, he will show a bad example. Uh, yes, right. Yes, yes, it's a bad example. He, the name of the whole dynasty will be blackened. They'll be considered, oh, those people, they're cowards. That Arjuna, he was called to battle and he didn't fight. He turned away at the last minute. He didn't fight. He was a coward. What kind of people are these? A dynasty, they are useless people. And so they, they, by not fighting, he's setting the worst example for his dynasty. He's meant to fight as a Kshatriya. Because one of the qualities of the Kshatriya, to be a hero, to show heroism, to have that quality, being so bold, so, so important. Arjuna should be very careful what he does to set the right example. So, you can see from this how you, we can see how these different reasons which Arjuna had given, that they're not supported by the principles of Varnashram Dharma. Arjuna gave these reasons for not fighting, but according to the principles of Varnashram Dharma, Arjuna was going against the principles of Varnashram. Is it clear? Any questions? Everyone's very quiet. Hare Krishna Maharaj, I have a question. Yes, Prabhu. Regarding to Varnashram Dharma, <clears throat> as it is mentioned earlier, uh, that if one follows the Varnashram Dharma, definitely he will go to Brahma Loka. And then again, when it comes to our discussion between Ma. Mahaprabhu and uh, Ramananda Rai, Mahaprabhu didn't accept Varnashram Dharma is not the highest one. 
but when it comes to uh, devotees and following uh, sadhana bhakti it's really difficult to really jump into a pure devotion state without following the varnashram dharma and then uh, it's always looks like a, a kind of um, a confusion state like you know whether should i follow a Bra- Bra- varnashram dharma or should i be a uh, sadhana bhakti to uh, come to the mode of goodness so which way is the best to follow the varnashram dharma or uh, uh, Yes, we see Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Now, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was a... He was born in a Brahmana family, and later on he took sannyas. So he very strictly followed the principles of sannyas. Of course, he took sannyas in the line of Shankara, but he, very, he was very strict in the principles of sannyas. Even today, the, 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 the sannyasis in the line of Shankara, they're very, very strict. They have a lot of principles which are not like ISKCON sannyasis. You, you know, as a sannyasi in ISKCON, we have to mix with, you know, there's always women around, and sometimes women also may do service. And like that, the women come also, they're not dressed properly sometimes. But in the line of Shankaracharya, these things are very carefully monitored. So, Lord Chaitanya, he was a sannyasi, but at the same time he says, Naham vipro na chanarapatir na pivaishona sudra. Right? He says, I am not a Brahman or a Kshatriya or a Vaishya or a Sudra. I am not a sannyasi or a Vanaprastha or a Grihastha or a Brahmachari. I am simply the servant of the servant of that one Supreme Lord who satisfies, who satisfies all the damsels of Braja. So on the spiritual platform, Lord Chaitanya is a servant of, he comes as in the mood of a servant of Krishna. But on the material platform, he follows Varnashram. Strictly, every day, go to the sea, take bath three times a day. He was very strict about uh, how he lived, uh, living very simply, very austerely. All the principles of sannyas. And then, uh, but, mater uh, ma so materially, his, he was observing the duty, and spiritually, he was also in the mood of being the servant of Krishna and going to see Krishna and even when he went to the temple one time in Jagannath Puri, the old lady climbed onto his shoulders to see Lord Jagannath. So Lord Chaitanya didn't curse her, but Lord Chaitanya said, I wish Krishna had blessed, had, had blessed me with the same enthusiasm to see Lord Jagannath. So Lord Chaitanya appreciated the old lady's enthusiasm. So there's material duties and spiritual duties. Lord Chaitanya did not reject Varnashram. He asked Ramananda Rai to quote some verses from the scriptures about the goal of life. So Lord, uh, Ramananda Rai began with a verse uh, recommending Varnashram. So that was not what Lord Chaitanya wanted to talk about. Lord Chaitanya wanted to bring up the mood of pure devotion. So Varnashram Dharma is a preliminary phase in the step to coming to Krishna consciousness. Yeah, we don't neglect Varnashram. At the same time, it's external. That's the point. Lord Chaitanya said this is external. Externally, one may be brahmachari. Externally, one is sannyasi or one is grihastha. But internally, can be very different. And we see, like Ramananda Rai, he was niskinchana. Although, materially, he, he may have appeared like a, a grihastha or a, you know, a, a kshatriya, but he was the most elevated devotee. He did not, he was not attached to anything. He saw everything as Krishna's property. So Varnashram is external. 
but it's important. We can't neglect it. We do have to observe principles of Varnasha. There are different duties for the people in different ashrams. The duty of our, we're all servants of Krishna. Of course, we don't, we don't strictly follow all of these things, but it's good if we can. The more we try to follow the principles of Varnasham, the more purification comes. And so, uh, brahmacharis, they're meant to study. Grihastas, they're meant, they're meant to do sacrifice, and they're meant to also give some, some kind of charity, do some kind of charity for the other ashrams. Different duties are there. So we have to follow, we, we, we don't neglect Varnasha. We do try to implement it within our society. We see, we have sannyasis, we have vanaprastas, we have grihastas, we have brahmacharis. We have also brahmacharinis. So uh, there are different duties, different positions. Ultimately, on the spiritual platform, we're all servants of Krishna. But we have different duties, different positions in society to follow. According to our spiritual situation, we have duties, and according to our material situation, there are duties. You have to keep a balance between the two. You cannot neglect. You cannot neglect the material duties just for the sake of being spiritual. Lord Chaitanya was very strict, but at the same time, Krishna is in everyone's heart. I don't know, did that help you Prabhu? Did that answer your question a bit? Yeah, thank you very much Sri It's a good explanation. Hare Krishna. Brahma, Bra, Lord Chaitanya, they were playing, oh, there was a woman singing in the temple at Jagannath Puri and she was singing beautifully about Lord Krishna's pastimes and Lord Chaitanya became very attracted. When he heard the singing, he, would, he began running towards the woman and just happened that one of Lord Chaitanya's servants, he was able to grab Lord Chaitanya and stop him and tell him that, no, no, this is a woman singing and Lord Chaitanya he, had, he hadn't realized it was a woman. And then when the man, when his servant grabbed him and told him that, then he said, oh, you have saved my life. <laughs> because Lord Chaitanya was just hearing the glories of Krishna and he was so attracted. He wanted to run there and congratulate this thing. But uh, in that purport, Prabhupada talks about how sannyasi should never hear a woman singing. He should never hear a voice of a woman. But Prabhupada himself would in, employ women to sing. He would get women, sometimes he'd get women to come and sing and to lead the kirtan. So, time, circumstances, time, place and circumstances. We have to understand how to implement these things. So principles of Varnashram are external. At the same time, we do try to follow them as much as we can in this time of Kali Yuga. All right, so we said compassion was not appropriate for this, this, this Kshatriya. Enjoyment is appropriate for the Kshatriya, but his enjoyment is not in leaving the battle. His enjoyment should be in fighting. That should be his enjoyment. And win or lose, he should enjoy. Sinful reactions. Certainly, we will worry about sinful reactions. Prabhupada writes, a devotee of Krishna is very careful, very conscious to avoid any sinful reactions. So Lord Chaitanya, uh, here in this particular case, 
Uh, Arjuna is worried about sinful reactions by fighting, but if he doesn't fight, he's going to get sinful reactions because he's neglecting his duty and also he is He's not doing his duty, so he will, he will get sinful reactions. And if he does fight, he won't get sinful reactions, because fighting is his, that's his duty. It's what he's supposed to be doing. And when you perform your duty, you don't get sinful reactions. We'll hear about that tomorrow. And destruction of the dynasty, by not fighting he's going to ruin the name, the respect of the dynasty. Okay, so we'll go back to these points, Let's see. Arjuna's reasons for not fighting, principles of Varnashram Dharma, then preaching application. Arguments to defeat the concept of Varna determined by birth, right? Some arguments we heard, if your father is a doctor, it doesn't mean you're a doctor, you still have to study. Your father may be a high court judge. It doesn't mean you're also a high court judge. You have to get that position. So birth, birth is an advantage, but you still have to have the qualification. Qualification has to be there. Now somebody's born in a Brahmana family, hopefully they'll be vegetarian. They may be pious and religious. He may have the opportunity to hear the Shastra and they may have nice Brahminical qualities like cleanliness and so on. So these are good things. If by birth one has that training, then it's much easier to become the Brahmana, to develop the Brahminical qualities. Then general principles from Arjuna's dilemma and surrender to Krishna. Arjuna's dilemma. Should I fight or should I not fight? This is Arjuna's problem. Confusion. What to do? And Arjuna could recognize it. He's a Karpanya dosha. Dosha. My faults. He understood his fault was due to miserly weakness. This miserliness. And people are, most people are miserly about the human life. They don't want to take up the real business of human life. They're thinking other things. They're thinking about material life. They're thinking about enjoyment of sense gratification on the mundane, on the bodily platform. So this is miser, miserly weakness. So Arjuna surrendered himself to Krishna. And this, in our own practice of Krishna Consciousness, is a very important principle that we need to take shelter of spiritual authorities. We need guidance. We shouldn't be, we shouldn't try to be independent. We shouldn't think, I know, I know everything. It's very important for us to give up that independent nature and to surrender ourselves to the spiritual authorities. And be willing to hear and to take guidance from others. So here's a quote from Prabhupada. Someone like to read? I can read it once. Father and teacher is advised by Chanakya Pandit that you should always chastise, chastise your son and disciple. Always find out mistake. Don't be angry, but it is the business of the teacher and the father simply to find out your mistakes, not to find out your good things. Never recognize a disciple's business or son's business as very good. Then they will spoil. That is the injunction of Chanakya. 
Go ahead. Go so ahead. far, we are so 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 far we are concerned. When our spiritual master used to chastise, we took it as blessings. That was very nice, and he would chastise like anything. Damn rascal, foolish, stupid, anything, all good words. Shrimad Bhagavatam 2.9.4, Japan, April 22, 1970. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Actually, that time Prabhupada was in Japan, and they were having Prabhupada's Vyasa Puja. <laughs> and, uh, and so there were some mistakes made. The devotees didn't know how to organize Prabhupada's Vyasa Puja. And Prabhupada told them, get some pushpa. <laughs> so pushpa, they didn't know what Prabhupada meant. And so they thought it was a kind of rice. They thought push, pushpa and rice, you know, they thought it was rice, fried rice. Actually Prabhupada was saying flowers. But another problem is in, in Tokyo, in Japan, you don't get flowers very easily. It's not like here where flowers grow everywhere. In Japan, very difficult to get flowers. There's no land, there's no space. People are so packed together and all the land, there's buildings everywhere. So very difficult to find land where you could grow anything. Flowers are very expensive there. And so when Prabhupada was asking for flowers, the devotees, they just didn't know what Prabhupada meant. <laughs> So Prabhupada would get angry at them, oh stupid, what is this, rice? This, I said pushpa, and they thought it was rice. <laughs> and sometimes Prabhupada even got chastised by his own sp spiritual master. Does anyone remember the incident? Where Prabhupada was chastised by Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati? Prabhupada told us. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Uh, once when he went to meet his spiritual master, so they were, were talking about the spreading of the Krishna consciousness movement. But Prabhupada said that uh, if we are not independent, how can we uh, do preaching for the Krishna consciousness? Once India get independent, then we can uh, do the Krishna consciousness. But uh, the spiritual master argued that. Uh, that independence is on the bodily platform, but our Krishna consciousness is on the soul platform. It will make us independent forever if we spread Krishna consciousness. Hmm. So we just ties him on this point, on the point of independence. Okay. Yeah, that was on their, their first first meeting. On the very first meeting, yes, yes. Prabhupada had that experience. But there was another incident also. There was an, after Prabhupada had become his disciple, he got chastised. Anybody know? Uh, yes. The, continue, Mataji. Go ahead. Who knows? The spiritual master appeared in his dream, Prabhupada's dream, and said, Dude, Kasanyas, come on, get up. <laughs> so uh, he was uh, terrified in starting, but uh, after that he took a step to take a sannyas. Mm -hmm. He argued that how can I leave my family, my <laughs> son, my wife. Well, he don't, yeah. Dream, it appeared. Yeah, he was reluctant. Yes, that's not the point I'm thinking about. There was another case. Okay, nobody know? I'll tell it. So, Prabhupada was listening to Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati was giving lecture, and Prabhupada was sitting there. And so then somebody behind him touched him on the shoulder. Some other devotee from touched him on the shoulder. And so our our Srila Prabhupada turned around to look around to see what was going on and thinking, who touched me? And immediately Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati stopped speaking and he began to speak to our Srila Prabhupada and to the gentleman behind who had touched Prabhupada on the shoulder. 
And he immediately addressed them and he said, you too. <laughs> and he began to speak to, he said, first of all, he said to the old man who was sitting behind our Srila Prabhupada and who touched Prabhupada on the shoulder to get his attention. He said to him, do you think you have purchased me because you donate 10 rupees a month? And then he said to our Bhaktivedanta, Abhai Prabhu at that time, maybe he was initiated, but only recently initiated. So he said, do you want to come up here and talk? So Prabhu, Prabhupada said, it was the moment of greatest mercy. He said, uh, the chastisement, the direct chastisement of my spiritual master was the moment of greatest mercy. Mm. Prabhupada said, I was so humbled by the chastisement. So he understood, he said, that was the greatest blessing. Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati was always very strict, like he didn't like people to interrupt or to speak during the lectures. They must hear carefully. Mm. So Prabhupada was quoting this to his devotees there in Japan when he was chastising them <laughs> and he was telling them that when the spiritual master chastises, it's a blessing. Don't take it badly. <laughs> okay, Srila Prabhupada ki jai. All right, are there any questions today? Anybody? Anything? Are you doing okay? Are you keep are you learning the verses? You know you have to memorize verses. And you have to also write an open book essay. How many essays did you write for the first two unit? The first units when you did you write for nectar of instruction and Ishopan? One for nectar of instruction and one for Ishopanishad. So you have to also write something for Bhagavad Gita. So I will look through the topics and tomorrow we will tell you something. You can begin writing, planning your essay, because it's an important part of the assessment. Do you have any difficulties with the questions which are there? The closed book questions, there's a number of questions on the chapter. Are you ans have you already answered all these questions? Let me get my book. Okay, Bhagavad Gita chapter 1, what is the significance of Dhritarashtra saying, Mamaka? Anybody? He pointed out his sons, that my sons. My he sons. He separated his sons and Pandavas. Okay, yeah, he's making, and what's wrong with that? Are, they not, are the Pandavas not his sons? He showed that he um, showed more affection to his sons and he was uh, acting not as a king, as a father. <laughs> yeah, he he's actually the stepfather, but he's the uncle of the Pandavas. And the Pandavas have no father, the Dhritarashtra is taking care of them, so he's like the father. But he's made the distinction, my sons and the sons of Pandu. So why was Dhritarashtra fearful? Someone else? Because it was of Dharma Kshetra. He was fearful of the influence of the holy place. Uh, the influence of the holy place, 
Was that the, what, what was his, what was the fear? That either party would not fight. Right, fight. yes, yeah, they, they may not fight. Or he, but he would have liked also the Pandavas would just go away. If they just go away and didn't fight, then that's also good. Number three, how was, how was Sanjay able to see the battlefield of Kurukshetra? Sakharian? Uh, the blessing given by Vyasadeva. Yes, right, by the blessing of Vyasadeva, right. Number four, what is the significance of Duryodhana saying dharma tava shishena? Oh, dimata tava shishena. What is the significance of Duryodhana saying this? Maharaj is that uh, because he has uh, all the Kulaguru and the Dronacharya was there at his side, then uh, he is uh, he's really proud of his own strength and the Pandava strength. Well, Dimata Tava Shishyena, he's talking about Duryodhana speaking to Drona and he's saying, Look at this, this army arranged by your disciple. The disciple, who was that disciple? The one who was... Drishta Jumna. right. Drishta Jumna, he'd arranged the army and the, you, this, he's your disciple. So, and he's meant to kill you. So Duryodhana's pointing out to Drona that you should be careful. That this is your disciple and he's arranged like this. So you have to be very careful. This Drishta Jumna is born to kill you. And you taught him everything. He's your, he's your Shiksha. All right. Number five, list the vows Bhima made af after the gambling match. Kirtida? You know that? He uh, said that he would kill all the sons of uh, Dhritarashtra and also he would uh, drink the blood of the Dushasana and also wash the hairs of Drupadi with this. Well, yeah, but there, there was one more. He would break the, break the thighs of Duryodhana. Yes, yes. Right? Break the thighs. Number six, why was Duryodhana content or confident of full support of Bhishma and Drona? Anybody? Because they were on his payroll? <laughs> yes, uh, that's, you could say that. They were on... They were uh, living there in the palace, they were on his side. And also because they had not interfered when they tried to disrobe Draupadi. They didn't say anything. Bhishma and Drona didn't say anything. So Duryodhana is pretty confident that they're not going to interfere, that, that, that he has their support. All right, then number seven, four signs of victory for the Pandavas. That's easy. Uh, Lord Krishna wa was with, uh, with Arjuna. Lord Krishna is on Arjuna's side, right? And Lord Krishna is the husband of the goddess of fortune. And Hanumanji and the, uh, and the Rab, and yeah. the chariot. And the chariot indestructible chariot given by the fire god. Yes, Hanumanji on the flag. And then one more. The conch shells. The conch shells. It's conch shells, a symbol of Lord Vishnu. Right? 
Number eight, what's the significance of Hanumanji's being on Arjuna's flag? Sign out with three. No, what is the, the point here? The significant Arjuna's praying to Hanuman. How is he praying to Hanuman? What's he praying? Just the way Hanuman helped Ram to win the battle. Similarly, uh, Hanuman will help. Right. Ram. Right, that's right. Thank you, Prabhu. What is the meaning of the word Guda Kesha? Conqueror of sleep, right. And then six kinds of aggressors, that's straight from the purport. Number 11, list, list, the, list the conse consequences of destruction of the dynasty. Okay, we went through that several times today. Number 12, which quality of Arjuna makes him fit to receive the knowledge of Bhagavad Gita according to the last purport of chapter 1? Did anybody get that? What's the quality? I have to look at it. Go. Kind, kind, kind and soft heartedness and devotional service of Lord. Is it? Okay. Uh, yes, Maharaj. Okay. So you've checked that. Explain the significance of the words Dharma Kshetri in relation to the outcome of the battle and the fear of Dhritarashtra. The significance of the word Dharma Kshetri to the outcome and the fear of Dhritarashtra. No, Dhritarashtra knows the Pandavas are more pious than his sons. So Dharma Kshetra certainly is going to be in favour of the Pandavas. The fact that it's a holy place was going to help the Pandavas in the war. In the war. So Dhritarashtra was worried about that because he knows that Maharaj Yudhisthira is the son of Dharmaraj. And so, you know, the Pandavas are much more dharmic than the, the Kauravas. So it will be in their favour. Discuss ways the signs of victory connect to Krishna's protection. Vaishnava's qualities and attitudes and significance of others in the line of a sadhaka. Discuss the signs of victory. Connect to Krishna's pr pr protection. So, Krishna's protection. Krishna's there on the chariot with Arjuna. So, because Krishna's there as his chariot driver, so he's assured of protection from Krishna. And we see also how, oh well, no, they just went from, from 1 1 and then 1 14 to 20. I have to look through that. I'm not so familiar. It's a discussion question, it's not just a quick answer. Okay, so the main questions are answered. Last question. Significance of the following names of Krishna used in the chapter. Achuta, Govinda, Madhava, Rishikesh. Okay, Achuta. Achuta, unconquerable. Govinda, master of the senses, protector, 
Madhava, husband of the goddess of fortune, Rishikesha, master of the senses. Anyway, it's all there in the book. You're given the places where you can find it. Go through these things. You should know these things. All right, so we'll stop here. We'll meet tomorrow, 7 o'clock. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada ki. Jai, jai. Go back to Vrinda ki. Hare Krishna.